Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com and today we're going to talk about green screening in Premiere Pro to create effects like these. Pretty cool. Now, if you do enjoy this video tutorial, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that little red button so you never miss another video editing or Premiere Pro tutorial in the future. And if you really enjoy what you're seeing here, please consider picking up a copy of my, it's a Photoshop course all about how to retouch images, but I hate taking donations. So if you, if you really enjoy it, this channel is funded by viewers like you. So a link appears up there in the corner. I also have a link down in the bio of this video where you can pick up that course. I am working on a Premiere Pro course that's going to be coming out at some point. I want to say soon, but soon's pretty relative. Is that next week, next month, next, next year? It's going to be sooner than next year. Uh, but for now, you can pick up a copy of the Photoshop course. It really helps what we're doing here. Uh, let's just go ahead and get into this video. All right, so here we are in Premiere Pro, and we have a few different clips. We have a clip of these pharmacists talking to each other, and they've got a big green screen. And then we also have a very different type of green screen application, which is just a computer or some type of maybe signage or digital device that's green screened out that you need to replace with some sort of graphic. Well, we don't want to right click. Let's try that again. <laughs> and what I want to do here, I have a sequence out here. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to drag the background clip into place. So this is just the inside of a truck and a, a, a four forklift ends up driving in and dropping off a bunch of stuff, uh, but the, the background can be whatever. However, it may be important that you do get a background that somewhat matches the light that was used to shoot uh, that studio shot with the green screen. Now, I didn't 100% match this up as I say that, uh, but I just grabbed the background that looked like it had somewhat soft diffused light. Now, I'm going to grab this uh, sort of female doctor explaining to the, the, the explaining about patient with another doctor, right? Very descriptive video. And um, we want to knock away all of the screen. Now, this is just a hyper bright green backdrop. Sometimes your green backdrop won't be quite as extreme or as clean, but this effect works with a, a, a not so great green background or even one that's nice and solid like this. Come over here to your effects panel. If you don't have your effects panel, you can go window effects and we're going to go down to video effects. We're going to come down here to keying and I'm interested in this one here called the Ultra Key. Now I'm gonna drag and drop this onto my clip out here, the female doctor, there we go. And up here in my effect controls, I'm gonna collapse some of this stuff. We don't need our motion or opacity stuff open here. We have Ultra Key. And we'll begin by just grabbing the little eyedropper tool and just saying, look, hey, I'm gonna click on the green because I want that to go away. Well, that, that looks like we have a good start. Uh, now, a quick little tip. If you are working with uh, a green screen that's not evenly lit, uh, try first sampling the darker greens, like the stuff in the shadows, see how that works, and then move to the brighter greens and just, you'll have to play around and see what works best. In this case, I'm just gonna grab the green and knock it away. Now, if I zoom this in a little bit, you are gonna see like the edges of her hair, they are far from perfect, as are the edges of his hair, and even the edges, you know, around his jacket. So we have all of these different options here. The matte generation, this is the actual creation of the, what, like basically what gets knocked out of my image. Well, all the green stuff gets knocked out, right? But this is what's going to tell Premiere Pro, hey, knock out a lot more or a lot less of that green screen stuff. Now, when I'm working in matte generation, the way I've been taught to do this is to come up here under output and to work with the alpha channel. And I'm actually very comfortable doing this because this looks like a mask like we would have in Photoshop, right? Uh, now, with this, we can begin sliding the transparency back and forth. And you can see the black stuff is what's going to disappear. So if I have that much of their outfits turning black, well, when we go back to the composite, you're going to see they, they're like ghosts there not really what we want. We're going to go back to alpha channel and we're going to crank the transparency back over. We definitely want them to be solid white. Great. Uh, then you can tweak the highlights, which we're not really doing much in the highlights there. You can also tweak the shadows. We don't really need to do anything there. I'll just hit the, you know, reset parameter arrows there. And then you have your tolerance as well. This is going to have to do a little bit with, you know, kind of the edges and how uh, Premiere Pro respects where exactly uh, the, the edges of what is or isn't getting knocked out. And then you have pedestal. So in our case, the pedestal is not doing much, but it is, if you watch the edge of her hair right in there, it is either making that more full or making it disappear. Maybe I'll make that a little bit more full. That's great. So that's the matte generation. Now matte cleanup, this has to do with just the edges of what's going on here. Now for matte cleanup, I like to go back to the composite output view mode because I can really see what's going on. In fact, I'm going to zoom in on my video a little bit here. We're at 150%. That's great. And I'm just going to zoom up because I'm really most interested in their hair. You can see that uh, based on the way 
way we worked with our matte generation, we really kind of added some junk to the edges. Maybe I do want to crank that pedestal back up a little bit, something like that. I'm going to collapse my matte generation. And then for matte cleanup, we'll work with the choke first. So if we scroll up on the choke, you can see how it's going to kind of trim stuff in and get rid of kind of that fringe. But it does leave us with a hard line edge. So let's go ahead and soften that edge a little bit. There we go, something like that. And then you can play around with the contrast, which almost like sharpens the edge a little bit. I'm not really going to, I don't want to adjust that at all. And then your midpoint as well. And you can just pull back and forth on that and see if you like what it does or doesn't do uh, in this case i think i'm going to leave it kind of right where i've got it now i'm going to collapse matte cleanup and a color correction by the way i'm going to jump right into this i don't really do any color correction here in ultra key i'll either use lumetri color or there's the three-way uh color tools here in premiere pro you can use anything like that usually i'm jumping in with lumetri color and doing any kind of color correction white balance nonsense I never use a color correction here. In, well, I shouldn't say never. I almost never use a color correction here. Spill suppression, however, this has to do with sometimes when you are working uh, on a green screen file. Now, this green screen file is pretty clean. Maybe there's some uh, green reflected here on the underside of his jacket. Uh, sometimes you will have some green that is reflected into the edge of the hair or the clothing that the subject is wearing. And you can just go in here and play and desaturate uh, and just, just be careful. You know, you can adjust the range. Uh, you can see there that does a lot of bad things but if we swing the range way back that's also doing bad things i think i'm just going to reset range and then you can adjust the spill as well and what i usually do is i come in here and i'll just tweak these until it looks like it's kind of rectifying uh, wherever my problem areas are and i can see that the edges look pretty decent maybe i'll go back to matte cleanup and you can just adjust and tweak the choke a little bit if need be tweak the softening a little bit uh, but if we just set this back to fit and if i hit the little fx button and just shut it off. Well, there it is with the green screen, and there it is after. So if I just quickly play through this, you can see now they're standing in the back of this truck, and the forklift is closing in on them quickly. All right, so that is that example. I'm just going to select that clip and get rid of it. Let's talk about uh, this option here where we have a, a device or sign or something that has some green in it. Now, the interesting thing about this example is there's green reflected down here onto the keys of this laptop. So that may end up being an issue. And maybe this has a little bit of green in it out here. So in this case, we don't have this just bright, perfect green. So let's see what happens. Let's go effects. Let's drag the ultra key out, drop it in place, and I'm going to use Use the eyedropper tool once again. I'm just going to grab from the screen, but I can see right off the bat the the forklift image is not even coming through clearly, um, and there's other stuff that's going on. See how like some of it's shining through here on the bottom part of the image, and we have some texture issues that are happening. So let's begin attacking this. Number one, by setting the output to alpha channel, and you can see all these dark gray areas. They're all problem areas. We got this nice black chunk here for the laptop screen, but all the rest of it should be solid white. So let's go to matte generation, and here we'll begin playing with stuff. Let's first try transparency, and you can see, well, that, that just adds to the black. So what if I reduce? Well, there, that gets rid of some of it, but then we start losing the hyper blackness of the screen. This is where I think pedestal is going to kind of help us. We can either increase or decrease. I think I'm going to increase that a little bit, and let's mess around with the tolerance. No, that's not going to do us any good. Shadow, this looks like this actually might help. Let's boost the shadow, and let's look here at highlight. We can kind of play with the highlights a little bit. Let's come back to transparency, see if we can get rid of a little bit of that. Let's come back to pedestal now and pump that up. And now we have a pretty good idea of what's going on. We just had to kind of play around with our sliders here, figure out and, and, and get to the, the heart of the matter, if you will. So now that we have that, we can go back to our composite uh, view. And you can see, by the way, there's one little annoying dot there in the middle that seems to be showing through. But let's see here if we go to matte cleanup and we change the choke a little bit, if we can't get rid of that. Yeah, there we go. We just stretch that right out and actually it made the corners of the laptop look even more perfect and smooth. And then we probably want to soften it just a little bit not enough so it just looks like a crazy blurred edge and then we want to come to spill uh, spill suppression because we do still have reflections of green down there so let's try desaturating oops i'm sorry desaturate increase the desaturation don't decrease it and you can see it's just getting rid of that green that has spilled out onto those laptop keys we can just kind of you know push and pull it either way um, i'm gonna decrease the range a little bit or i'm sorry i'm gonna increase the range just a little bit I'm getting mixed up here uh, and then we can try pushing or pulling the spill. I don't. It doesn't need to be adjusted too, too much. And I think just like that, if I shut it off, there's before, there's after. And I'm mainly focused on just watching the green of these laptop keys. And I can see that it goes from green to being like normal colored laptop keys. And everything looks pretty good. Now, one little kind of finicky thing is, I don't know if you see it, but over here on the far right side, 
the mask is knocking out or, or making the background appear a little bit over there if you just watch when I shut it off versus turn it on. So if we set, set this back to alpha channel, we're going to see there is some black along the edge over there. So maybe the easiest thing to do would be just to mask away the ultra key effect from even touching that part of the video frame. So I'm going to set this back to composite view mode. I'm going to grab my pen tool to just draw a quick mask. I'm going to zoom this out maybe to like 75% and eh, maybe make it a little bit smaller, 50% here. And I'm just going to draw a big mask over this whole area just to make sure we're not getting anything and join it. Now you can see what's happened is uh, the mask is now applying our ultra key just to the area that we drew. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to tick on inverted and you can see it's actually just going to clean up that edge. Now we don't have any bits missing along that edge. I can collapse my mask options over here under ultra key and there's before ultra key, there's after ultra key. Let me make sure I deselect that mask. That's just kind of annoying. There's before ultra key, there's after ultra key. And we just replace that screen nicely and we combat some kind of real world issues in terms of the green reflecting onto the laptop, the edge kind of tripping out on us a little bit. And we really attack this as though it's a real deal project. And this is how you uh, work with green screening in Adobe Premiere Pro. Super easy. Well, I shouldn't say super easy. It's super easy once you've got it figured out. And it's a whole lot of fun to do uh, when you when you go and you shoot green screen and you really play with it and have a good time with it. So, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Again, if you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you never miss another video in the future. And for learning how to green screen and using the Ultra Key and all the other stuff that went along with this tutorial, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.